It is our video where we discuss things uh, rather than the daily video. We've decided to move on to a discussing things model. And things have happened this morning, John. Um, Michael Edwards has found himself now Liverpool's technical director. He's got a new job, yeah. He's been promoted. It Can of... I ask a point of order? Do you Go think on. he's got a new job or do you think he's got a new job title? I think he's got a new job. Do you? Okay. Yeah, because he's doing contract negotiations and he's doing transfer negotiations. So I think that very much is a, is a new job. I think, you know, there's a few interesting things about it. It looks to me like they're going to split Ian Ayer's role. I think that's that seemed quite clear, which seems quite sensible to me. It seemed quite, you know, wide encompassing Ian Ayer's role, really. You know, he was on the transfer committee. He was also doing well involved in kind of commercial deals, really. And so I think it looks to me like they're going to, they're going to split it from split the business and football side of the role, which which is sort of understand. And then there's, there's also this idea that someone who we don't know anything about has become quite powerful and I think that makes people nervous and I think you've seen on Twitter over the last sort of 12 hours on Facebook and, and I'm sure people just chatting in real life as well, I think that still exists, um, the, the people kind of are a bit worried about it, they're like well who's this, who's this fella you know and, and who's, who's suddenly kind of in charge of transfers and, and there's a little bit of mistrust I think, would you agree? I think there is a little bit of mistrust, I mean I'm quite, uh, the f first reason why I sort of said well you know it, how much difference is it? And you are right to say that you know if, if he's if he's if he's in charge of negotiations, yeah. then that is you know that is a little bit different. If you yeah. know what I mean, it's, it'll be significantly different if he's looking after that process. It is a different role for him, but it's still it's still on the football side, and he's been doing footbally things for a while. If yeah. you know what I mean. So I think if you if you go down that route, what interests me, well, I think I think it lines up with the idea that. What's likely to be, what's likely to happen, is promotion from within for what ends up being the CEO role. Yeah, Billy Hogan's going to get it. Yeah, and I think it allows Billy Hogan to stay in London, which is what he wanted. Yeah, uh, which, <laughs> which 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 sickens me to my stomach. Um, but which I think is where you is is where that ends up. I mean, how you manage to to, to uh, enact cultural shifts, for instance, as a person running a company, if you're going to only spend two or three days a month in the place where that company primarily does its business, is a question that I'd quite like to have answered. Uh, a lot of people say you can do stuff remotely these days. You undoubtedly can, but I think sort of a day to day presence. If you feel as though things need to change, perhaps you don't. At which point that becomes a little bit more straightforward. But Anyway, that's almost a separate thing to, to what we're having this video about. But yeah. it does it does line that up, that possibility, and then it becomes that effectively Billy Hogan sort of oversees a number of people who are like Michael Edwards in different parts of the business. Yeah. But the part of the business, the football part, which does unnerve people, is because these fellas, a number of these different people sort of, you, you hear their names, yeah. but you'd never hear them speak or know anything really about them. They end up with no... They end up, you can almost affix any set of qualities to them. Now, there's a converse to this, which is, well, do you want to hear them speak? Do you want them to be in the public eye? I think there might be a fine line to walk there, and I'm not saying it's easy, but I think that's why there is that distrust, is that no one no one could pick him out of a lineup, if you know what I mean. Yeah. No one knows what he thinks about X, Y, or Z. Even if he does think anything about X, Y, or Z, you know, I think we haven't got to necessarily know, though, the inner workings of all of this, but we've got to know that there are inner workings. Just sort of see what I'm saying. Yeah, I think so. I think I think people would, would feel a little bit better if, if he'd spoken, he was impressive, and you think, well, he's an impressive man I can see I can see people being impressed by him when they met him but then as you say where do you draw the line you know you you've got Ian Ayr on on be on being Liverpool or whatever it was called with his Harley Davidson and stuff like that and so as you say well, how much do you want to know and then then there's the, the line that gets trotted out saying you know about the holy trinity at Liverpool is yep. the managers players and and the fans and the owners and you know the directors are just there to sign the checks and then, and then but then we, we we kind of moan and stuff when when they stay too much into the background so as you say it's a, it's a fine balance that's it's hard for for someone like Michael Edwards who who maybe you know just just thinks he's better off just kind of getting on with it with his job really and doesn't really see the positives of of being someone who's who's in the limelight a little bit more I would su suspect he'd have to start doing some things like with you know Ian Air is is required to, to to get involved in certain things you know if they unveil a player will Michael Edwards you know is, is he going to be sat alongside him when, when they do that or are they going to leave that to the manager I'd say in some instances that, that Michael Edwards wouldn't necessarily have to be there um then there's this issue, you know, he does a lot of public speaking and stuff, um, a and &M, he's, he's, he's a, you know, that, that's when he's got into a little bit of trouble, actually, when he's gone to conferences and stuff. Although, so look up with the idea that we just want to stop that sort of thing? May, maybe there is, but there, presumably there's a reason that Ian has been doing it, and it's not just because Ian Ayer wants to. Maybe no. there's, there's been some sort of decision that it's good for Liverpool Football Club to be seen at these sorts of things, and be good for, you know, the head of football, mm. if you like, to be talking at them. So he's got that. I'd, what I would say about Michael Edwards is he's, he's a football person, and... Something that people often say is, oh, there's no football people at 
the top at Liverpool. And well, you've got one now. He was a footballer. He might not have been a very good one, but does that really matter? He was a footballer. You know, he was a, he was a professional footballer. And then he's worked in football his whole life. You know, he hasn't he hasn't had any other jobs. He didn't quite happen for him as a professional. So went off to university, got a job at Portsmouth straight away. And I think it was 2003 I've written down here. Then he gets promoted, gets the job at Spurs. Then he comes to us in 2011. So he's been around Liverpool quite a while. He's yep, been in football. Years you know, for, for his whole kind of life. So he is a football man. So everyone who says, well, we want more football man, well, you've got one. You know, it might not be necessarily the one you want, but, you know, this is a guy who... who, who he's got away, he's got the experience. Yeah. He's done the, he's, he's done whatever he did at university, which yeah. I think was applying a lot of, sort of, well, was taking a lot of sort of business data yeah. stuff as a course, and he's come back and he's applied it to football. Yeah. And that's, that's, Perfectly fine, I yeah. think, and I think people want to say that's not perfectly fine. As though learning things about football's got to be this ridiculously sort of uh, cloaked dark art. But yeah. you, there's there's actually ways in which you, you you need to be able to quantify information and process it and work with it. It's it's literally a thing. It's not not a thing. Yeah. Yeah, and, the, and football's not this business on its own that is that, that has the kind of no relevance as to everything else. I mean, there, there are there are you know similarities in any sort of thing. And if he's doing contract negotiations, he'll be working out things like well, what is this asset worth to a business, which is just business management. And you know, it's a bit kind of cold, and we don't really like viewing football as that because we're football fans. But then it's not our job. We're just there to cheer and say our boss will continue us. That's but then there's there's the converse issue in this, which is that since. Effectively since Hicks and Gillette, and it's interesting at the minute because I'm doing 07, 08 and Ben Johnson on the last one, which hasn't come out yet, it will be out soon. But Ben Johnson actually talked about the fact that one of the things that happens here is is that you suddenly felt like you had to become an expert in everything. Yeah. Because you had, because there was so much, the, the, you felt like, I've got to know about what, what's going on here. I've got to get this information because this is my football team. Yeah. And I think that that's... And if you want to win the arguments, then you've sort of got to have the facts. Yeah. And that there's, that's still an ongoing, it's still an ongoing problem, and I think it's now an ongoing problem for all of football, given the fact that this happened to Liverpool and Manchester United, if you know what I mean, between the Glazers and Hicks and Gillette. Sort of having to have a sense of what everybody's doing at the club yeah. has become a thing that I think people, and that's why I do that, and I'm not saying it's easy, and I think a lot of this stuff, I, I, I often worry, just simply personally, that I come over a little... Like I'm trying to have a go with the club and I'm not. The thing I try to say over and over again is I don't think any of this is easy. I don't think mm. any of this is straightforward. I think it's really hard to find lines and to find balances. I think there are loads and loads of sort of vaguely based arguments. I do think it's disgraceful that Billy Hogan lives in London and I'll say that over and over again. But I, I think that there is, you know, there are very few things where I think you can sort of draw a line and go that way of doing things is not the way you should be doing it, if you know what I mean. Yeah. There aren't many of them. So, you know, for all we know, this fella could, come in, he could just simply keep things ticking over. The final say on players coming in and going out is going to come down to the manager, yeah. um, which is the only way in which you can do something like this. And instead, I think it's it's understanding that, for instance, at Dortmund, Zork worked alongside Klopp. He didn't. Klopp did not work for Zork. Klopp will not be working for Edwards. He'll be. Yeah. He'll be. He'll be working for. You know. He, he's still working for for the person who runs Liverpool, who's currently here and there, and will actually become. Um, will will probably become Billy Hogan if we think we're right. And then Billy Hogan works for John Henry and yeah. the rest of FSG, and that's the way in which this works. And I think. You're gonna have a structure. You've got to have a structure, and that structure sounds as fine as any other would to me. You know what I mean? I, I can't. I yeah. can't pick holes in that. And this fellow has been at the club for six years now. He's 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 done. You know, he's been doing what he's been doing now for for seven years preceding that. We have to simply sort of trust that. Well, he's he's an intelligent man. My my only concern is that if you're trying to make it easier, just simply to make Billy Hogan CEO and not have to have him move to Liverpool, then that's not necessarily the best reason to go about things. I don't think that is the reason we've done it. I think it seems to me like a, a kind of natural evolution, and it's, and it's quite close. Funny enough, to what FSG wanted to do originally do, yep. and, and, and they weren't allowed to, do, they weren't able to do it because because they wanted Brendan Rodgers and, and spoke to a couple of other managers, and they said, "Well, this is a bit mad." And and I think that's another thing that I, you know I'd like to point out is that the, the idea of the Michael Edwards promotion is that. It may, I, to me, it makes more sense to just bring in some random fellow in, and I think that it makes more sense to Klopp. Apparently, Klopp's back the move. First of all, because Klopp's got no interest in getting involved in contract negotiations, which is which I think is quite sensible for the manager, and also because he knows him, he likes him, he's talked to him about football a lot, and thinks, yeah, this guy's on my wavelength. And so, you know, people can say, oh, you know, we'll we'll look at the, the fellow who yeah. does this job at Man City is the guy they got from Barcelona, whose name I can never pronounce. Uh, uh, Bergestein. That's the one. That's close enough, anyway. And so, so, so there's a, there's, op, there's an obvious parallel there and there's, there's an obvious kind of comparison to be made and he's much more high profile he's played the game at highest highest level and you know he's kind of a bigger name but 
But if you're Jürgen Klopp and you're thinking, well, you know, they could go and get this fella, but then what if we don't get on? What if there's a clash there? You know, what if we've got completely different ideas of how we play football? So I think Klopp's got, you know what, this fella's clever. He's smart. We, we get on, we get on. And so there's, that's what I mean about a natural evolution. It's like, well, you know, he's been apparently shadowing in the for a year. It's this idea where he can go on and, and kind of do this job and we'll just have to see how we get on. And yeah, he might succeed and he might fail, but that's more or less the case for anyone you bring in. And also, yeah, the success and failure are actually quite difficult to measure in yeah. this regard, i.e. there might be tons of reasons why he can't, we can't necessarily get the players that we want, yeah. but then that comes down to the manager. There could be a ton of reasons why contract negotiations aren't going very well. Yeah. That could be because his hands are tied. And I think you've got to see it more as, I just said there when I did the structure before, that Klopp doesn't work with it for this fella, he works with him. To a certain extent, the more you articulate it, it feels a little bit as though this fella sort of works for Klopp. Yeah. Wherein it is, well, I, and this could be where it does fit quite nicely. You're saying they agree about football. They might not agree about football, but Michael Edwards might be thinking, well, but that fella's the fellow who's picking the footballers. Yeah, this is what he wants from an attacking midfielder, so it's up to me to get three lads who look like that, and he's going to pick one. Exactly. Or, or see who we can get. Yeah. Yeah. And I think you're completely right when you say about success and failure, and I think, you know, I'm talking about we'll, we'll have to wait and see. I think the, actually the ideal scenario is a year a year from now I say to you, I was Michael Edwards getting on, you go, don't really know, really, I think you're right, because the players have been good, but I'm not really sure. I that, think that's probably the best thing. That's probably the Rather best. Rather than having a definitive answer, because if it's a definitive answer, it's, prob- it's po- probably not a good one. It's probably not a good one, no. <laughs> uh, we haven't bought anyone, we've sold everyone, <laughs> um, as an example. And everyone hates it. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Phil Coutinho's so, on strike. Yeah, yeah, Phil, <laughs> yeah, Phil, Coutinho, Phil Coutinho's on strike, and, and Albie Moreno's playing four positions. Um, and, and, and captain. Uh, all right, then, that's been one of our uh, video-based discussions, where I'd like to think, you know, People are wiser off the back of them, but I don't really think that's the case off this one. Uh, but we've we've had a nice time in our room. Yeah, we have. What do you want to talk about today? The Friday show is out. That's really good. The Friday show is out and it was great. Um, AFQ later on, I'll be asking for questions about quarter to five as normal. City Talk will be out for those of you who don't subscribe. You should really think about subscribing. There's loads and loads of fantastic stuff and five pounds. For a lot of people, it is a fair bit of money, but at the moment, it's not a, not a lot of money in a worldwide sort of context, as we can discuss in a million different ways. Um, and um, and there's poppies, and there's judges. Um, listen, I'm not saying just ignore all that and, and just get stuck into the football, but let's all try and have a nice weekend and not foster hate. See you in a bit. <laughs>